Okay, uh, I've said a lot of times, a lot of times that, uh, I'm going to try to stop saying, oh. Let me slow down. I read a book, well, I flipped through a book uh, about five years ago, Dr. Phil's weight loss book. And he had a uh, he had a thing on there where he called high cost response foods and low cost response foods. And a low cost response food is a food that you can just go get instantaneously, whether it's something out of the fridge, or whether it's uh, or whether it's um, you know driving through a drive through or something like that. And a lot of his diet plan or his idea had a lot to do with the fact that if you have to earn the food or if you have to prepare it, or if you have to make it, or if you have to shop for it, you know, get your groceries, check out, load up your car, unload your car, put everything in the fridge, formulate a meal plan, and, and you know, make a meal, that's a high cost response food. That's a food or a meal that you had to pay for. And as I sit here and do what I'm doing and start to, you know, think, give thoughts to things, I woke up this morning, and I don't know what time it is. Well, I guess I do. Oh, shit. It's 12.45. Um, I woke up this morning about 6, and quite honestly, I didn't get much sleep, so I went back to bed till about 9. And when I got up at 9, I didn't really want to do anything. I really honestly didn't want to do anything. So I came outside, and, and literally right as I was making the decision to maybe go back to bed or just smoke some pot and just go do nothing, sit in the tent all damn day, um, it started raining. And it just kind of triggered, and it was like, wow, you know what? It's going to rain a lot, <laughs> and I need to be prepared for that rain. And the only way to be prepared for that rain is is to get this tarp up and, you know, get my camp, start getting my camp situated and unpacked. And last night was just a nightmare. Um, you know, everything in the tent, myself included, and stone trying to walk around and grab stuff, and it was just a bitch. So long story short, I, you know, sit here and... I'm starting to split some wood and stack some wood up. I've got the tarp up. I'll show you that later. Um, the tarp's up 100%, so it can fucking downpour, and I'd be good to go. So I'm going to sit here and split up all this cedar and stack it up over here in some good, you know, good starter pieces because most of it's dry. And back across the creek, I've got, you know, probably 50 or 60 rounds that Rich went and cut for me. And I've got to go over there, split all that, bag it up, and hike it across the creek today. So, um, you know, I guess, like I said, I, I just realized more and more that I'm not splitting wood because I want to. I'm splitting wood because I have to. I'm absolutely splitting wood because I have to. And if I don't split wood right now, I won't have a fire tonight. And I've learned last night that the crackling fire when I go to bed makes it a lot easier for me to sleep. I don't hear as many noises as I think I hear and all that good jazz. So, um, you know, I, I've just, I found myself in a situation where I'm doing things because I have to, but as I do them, I enjoy them. I'm proud of myself for doing them. Um, I've always had a saying, I don't like doing anything I don't like doing. And that's pretty much turned into, I don't do much of anything anymore. And that's what this is about. And coming out here and, you know, getting back to the basics and regrouping and figuring out what's important and figuring out what I want to do with the rest of my life. And I've got a lot of passions that are important to me. And I think I've got a few talents. And... Um, I genuinely would like to pursue happiness for once in my life. And, and um, so it, it's really neat how I'm doing things because I have to do them, but the more and more I do them, and, you know, as the time ticks by, I'm proud of myself. Not only am I proud of myself, but I've got a lot done around camp in three hours. Um, I got my whole tarp system up. I'm starting to split some wood. I've got a table set up. and. I got the, you know, the lanterns and the stuff out here, and, you know, I'm just starting to settle in and get situated, and I'm really, I'm really happy with my choice, I'm really happy with my decision to come out here, um, you know, as long as I keep myself busy, and I figure I've got a week worth of setting up camp and getting everything the way that I want it, and then uh, I'm going to start writing and start singing in the evenings, and, and, you know, start working on some other things, and, because when I come out of here, I've got to have either a frame of mind that's going to go take over the world. My cigarette went out.
I'm going to relight that. Bear with me here. <laughs> Everything's wet. Everything's moist. Make my pot last longer. <laughs> that was kind of a joke. Um, but uh, you know, when I come out of here, I'm I got to have a plan, or I've got to be mentally prepared to buckle down and do an eight to five, or get back into the mortgage thing, or get back into the real estate thing, or start buying and selling houses, or do something along those lines. But I've just gotten so used to doing nothing that nothing is any more, any more, it's all I know. And I don't want that to be the case. You know, Michelle, I loved her to death, and a lot of what went wrong between the two of us was is I didn't have a life. I didn't have my own life. We didn't have anything that we could share together because I was just being miserable, and I was just perfectly content with sitting on the couch smoking pot, watching TV. And that's not what it's about. So, um, I'm genuinely happy with my choice. I couldn't feel better about my spot. This spot is amazing. There's a parking lot 300 yards up the way, but I don't care. Um, I'm going to whittle some signs that, you know, just say something along the line of camp 300 yards ahead and please shoot that direction. Thank you. Have a good day type of thing. But uh, <coughs> I just really, I'm just really happy. I mean, the sun is right where I need it to be. I'll get my solar panel and stuff set up probably tomorrow. Um, see what kind of juice we can suck out of that bad boy and I used my battery last night for probably four hours three and a half four hours to uh, charge my camera run my external hard drive and run my laptop and I think it dropped three tenths of a volt so if I can get some juice back in that battery consistently then um, we will have zero issues or zero concerns with you know being able to keep things going so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep splitting wood and let you watch for a few and that's that. So here we go. Here we go, got a lot to make. I'm just kind of stacking it up here in front of the tent because I'm not sure if I want to do like a firewood tent or uh, something like that, but for right now, I'm just going gonna, gonna to stack it up here. Good bad boys right there. They'll be very nice. Probably cut those up a little bit. Try not to cut my foot off. This little guy's a little smaller than the rest of them are, but we'll make it. I don't know if you can see that, but check out that piece of wood covered in red and black ants. So we're going to go ahead and donate that piece to the river. to get all these guys dead here. The last thing I want is a tent full of red and black ants because they fucking fight like the same. But make for a good story. Okay. 
Okay, that piece is ant free. There may be an uncle in there, but as far as ants, there's none in there. Nice and dry, if you can't tell. A little wiggly jiggly there. Centipede down there, too. Gotta like me some critters. I likes me some critters. Probably should hit this one with an axe, but we're gonna see how strong we are. Pretty impressive stack of cedar right there. Make some shingles if I had to. Okay, that stack's about as high as I want to go. <clears throat> Guess I gotta keep puffing on the smoke. <clears throat> You know, and things like that, you, it's kind of crazy how you, you know, run around through life and don't really pay too much attention to things like safety and you know, getting hurt. Out here, 
I get hurt. I'm in double trouble. So, I really got to learn to slow down. And I threw that cigarette button to fire. I don't litter. My pockets are full of them. Um, you know, you get hurt anywhere else, you just run to the hospital and life's good. But here, I get hurt here and it could be my life. So, I'm just trying to learn how to slow down. Nobody to impress out here. Not only that, but I got all the time in the world. Because quite honestly, I could stay out here as long as I choose. So... Okay, she's a little wiggly jiggly. This guy's got ants in him too. Yep. Okay, this guy ain't worth nothing to me. This little round here. Nice for something. You know, the other thing was we didn't talk about, but when Rich left, we did not establish a day that he'll be back. So, uh, I really have no idea when he'll be back. So, I've got to make sure that I get across that creek tonight and get all that wood over there. Because if not, I could be out of luck when it comes to wood. He said he was planning on coming back and we uh, run up the road. He found a good spot with a bunch of wood, so I gotta stay on top of the wood situation. Okay, I'm getting hungry. I had a bowl of cereal this morning, but it doesn't exactly fill the belly.
nice dry wood there. So we'll burn all the cedar to get the fire started, and then that piss birch or whatever the hell it is, we'll uh, use that. Once it gets going, dry that stuff out around the fire at night. And with it stacked up here like log cabin style, it uh, it'll dry pretty easy. So as long as the rain's not on it and the wind's blowing through it, give it a little circulation. It'll be nice. But as you can tell, some of this stuff is pretty damn dry. That guy right there is not too bad. <laughs> She's all split up. So I'm going to quarter what I got in the tent. I had some drying around the fire last night and it started raining and I brought it in the tent. So uh, I'm going to quarter up the stuff in the tent, just a few pieces. I'm going to make myself something to eat. I'm going to drag my ass across that creek about 65 times. So that's what I'm doing with the rest of my day. The theme for today is wood. I got my old man's watch on. The old Timex with the elastic band. This thing has not had a. Uh, it had. My dad died five, four and a half years ago, and we never changed the battery. It's just been sitting in my room, so pretty impressive little pitch for Timex right there. Takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. shit I had in the tent. If you can't tell, it's dried out. It sat next to the fire all night last night, so she's good to go. So we'll stack her up over here, too. Some ventilation going through it.
Okay, all my wood that I have is stacked. I'll show you the tarp situation. I pull my pants up, packing a gun and everything. It's kind of, it's a little heavy on the waist. So here we go. Show you what we got going so far. Here's the camp. Got that big old bad boy right there. Gonna keep me dry. Don't have to freak out about getting wet anymore. It's kind of worried about the tent getting soaked and shit, so. Um, so, once again, you know where we're at, but I guess you could just call it gorgeous. Goes way down around the bend down there. That right there is a cedar stump that I'm gonna say is 20, yeah, 15, 18 feet high. So, and then this just ridiculously gorgeous creek. So, it's just beautiful. I just couldn't be happier about where I'm at. So, um, so that's camp. Got all that wood burn up. That's what we brought across last night. Um, fucking big dog Rich. Cut up all those stumps. He actually carved those out of stumps. They were existing stumps. And uh, that guy, he got in a truck, took Chase three miles up the road and found cell service three miles up the road, but uh, took Chase up three miles and uh, they split wood for probably three hours. Came back with a completely full truck. Um, dumped it up over here across the creek. So I've got to hump over there and get that over here today. But uh, for now, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna shut her down and get something to eat, and I might fish a little bit, see if I can't catch me a little guy. Um, just screw around, and um, then I'll go hump over wood later tonight. So, all right, we'll see you soon. Bye.